Chris, welcome into the studio today. I want to let you to know there is a life-changing moment. You are about to collide with the power and the glory of Almighty God. I want you to jump in with me today because we're going to deal with not only finding but binding that strong man and the spiritual forces that govern. Taking your ground, holding your ground, and the enemy is defenseless against the spiritual laws that we're going to talk about as you set them in motion in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, one of the great assignments on our life in ministry is to teach people everywhere how to harvest. You know, many people do not know that uh, they're as responsible to harvest as they are to sow. Reaping is receiving, Jesus said. And when you receive something, you have to receive it by faith. It requires faith to harvest. And the only way you're going to be able to receive what belongs to you is have faith for it. So what I want to say to you today as we enter into the, stu with the live studio audience here and, and for you to participate in what we're doing as you're seeing it wherever you may be on whatever device you're watching it on or whatever media you're hearing my voice today, I want you to know that 1 Corinthians 15 says, Thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory. Most people do not know victory is a gift. You know, God doesn't want you to be defeated. He wants you to walk in absolute victory. In your life, He redeemed you from the curse. He wants there to be no more curse. Victory is a gift. So many people stay defeated because they don't know how to receive their victory. And one of the most important things about victory is it is finished. Jesus did the work and you use your faith to enter into that finished work. You know, it's an amazing thing, uh, body of Christ. It's an amazing thing here that most people think they're using their faith to try to get God to do something. And faith is not something we do to get God to move. Faith is our response to what God has already done. Faith activates the grace of God. It gets over into the rest of God. And in other sessions, as we've preached along these lines, many of you remember, and some of the TV audiences, they've been watching, they may have tuned in and remember this. But, but from that position of rest is how God fights. You know, a lot of people are a little bit confused about, well, I'm in a spiritual warfare. I'm fighting the devil. Well, not according to Scripture, you're not fighting the devil. He's whipped. It is finished. Actually, there is a spiritual warfare. But you need to understand that you're not fighting with the devil. He is stripped. He is whipped. Jesus is seated. And he has the keys. Glory be to God. In fact, when you know you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ, it says the righteousness which is of faith does not say who's going to go into heaven to bring Jesus down from above. And it does not say who's going to go into hell and raise Jesus again from the dead. Well, what does it say? It says, the word of faith is nigh thee. Glory to God, even in your heart and in your mouth, the word which we preach. He deals with this aspect that because Jesus died for my sins, broke the curse off of me, and paid the penalty for my sins, he rose again with the keys, and he rose again sinless, spotless, and absolutely victorious. And when he was ascended and sat down, he gave me the gift, the scepter of his kingdom, the gift of his very own righteousness. I hadn't just been made righteous. God didn't just like wink and look the other way and say, okay, I'll let you in. You, you've done a lot of good works, I'll let you in. No, no. He had, God's a just God. He had to satisfy his own righteous requirements. God actually had to be righteous in declaring me righteous. In other words, I have to be righteous legally which grants me an authority that the accuser of the brethren is cast down, that I no longer labor under debt to the flesh. And what I did yesterday in sin debt, I no longer approach God with inadequacy or fear or intimidation. Why? I am justified. I live right now by the blood of Jesus and what he did for me just as if I had never sinned. And what that means is when I get that revelation, I don't say, hey, go up to heaven and get Christ to come down, meaning that heaven's got to do something else for me. Or I don't have to go to hell and get Christ to rise up from the dead. Why? Because I don't have to say something else needs to be done about the devil. The devil's as whipped as he's ever going to be. 
Jesus in heaven has given you everything that you will ever need to live godly and live victorious. The problem is not that heaven needs to do something else. The problem is not that hell needs to be more defeated. The problem is my people perish for a lack of knowledge. That's why we're talking to you today. That's why we're talking to you today. Because when the light shines in the darkness, the darkness comprehends it not. And I want you to know that when you take the ground that's been given you in the promised land of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ as a righteous believer, you have been given heavenly supernatural endowments that not only allow you to take the ground, but stand your ground, not yield your ground, and Satan is defenseless against you. You can walk in victory, absolute victory, every day and everything, everywhere. Now, it isn't for this TV session here as the people are watching, but I, I need to let you know by the Spirit that in the epistles of Peter, he says there are certain things that if you'll add these to your faith, if you do them, you will never fall. You know, religion is going to tell you, you sin and word, thought, and deed every day, and, and everybody's got a weakness, and, you know, I empathize with you, brother, and I can minister to you better if I've gone through something. Let me tell you something. God doesn't put you through stuff to teach you how to minister. <laughs> No, no, no. I don't have to be sick to know Jesus heals. And it never was his will for you to be sick. I don't know better how to get you healed because I was sick. I know how to get you healed by being healed. The laws that govern getting sickness off of me. This is what I'm trying to communicate to you, is that there are some laws that will put you in a place where victory will be the norm and defeat will be the exception. You were not created to live a defeated life. You were not created to live a bound life. You were created to take your promised land, to take the high ground, and be able to hold that ground. So therefore, you are not the sick trying to get well. You are the healed holding fast to your health. Praise God. So we're going to jump into the spiritual laws and the spiritual forces that not only produce victory, but here's the big deal. It says in the book of Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, Stand fast in the liberty wherewith you've been called, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. I want you to understand that people not only need to learn how to receive from God, but once they do receive, they need to learn how to keep what they've gotten. So what I'm really dealing with you about today is not a breakthrough into victory. That's a given if you call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says when you call on the name of the Lord, He's so merciful, He keeps covenant with mercy. Did you know that not one person that was healed in the ministry of Jesus, was even born again? That blind Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And when that man was let through the roof in that story in Luke chapter 5, he said, son, your sins be forgiven you. They said, oh, who can forgive sins but God only? And Jesus said, so that you may know, the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins. I say to the sick of the palsy, rise, take up your bed and walk. And my favorite statement he made was this, what's easier? What's easier? What's easier? To say to the man, son, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, rise, take up your bed and walk? A couple of things there. Jesus' theology was this. It's as easy to get healed as it is to get forgiven. Now let me ask you this question. If that was Jesus' theology and he came to do the will of God, and we know from the word of God that God's not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance, then I would say that almost no one in the body of Christ especially, but even people that have heard about the redemptive plan, there's almost no one in society that would argue the point that God so loved the world that he gave, that he reconciled the world to himself, that he already paid the price for your forgiveness, and it's by grace and a gift, a gift of forgiveness you receive. Forgive, see the word give is in you're giving for, see, for him forgiving you is him giving you something for you to be able to walk in victory. It's a, it's, it's a forgiveness. He, he gave you this for something, to, to take you out from under the authority of darkness, to bring you into the kingdom of his dear son. For the son of man didn't come into the world to destroy men's lives. He came to save them. Glory to God. Behold, the Lamb of God that's come to take away the sin of the world. My whole point is, it is easy in the mind of traditional Christianity to be forgiven. 
They know God is gracious. They know he's already paid the price. They know that all that call upon the name of the Lord should be saved. They know that he that comes to me, I'll in no wise cast them out. They know all this about God. And so therefore, when they come to God, they're saying, I, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe you've forgiven me. And they re receive it with ease. Now, according to the Scripture, it's as easy to be healed as it is to be forgiven. You know where the fallacy comes in? The fallacy comes in in this word salvation, the Greek word sozo, because it doesn't just mean forgiveness of sins. It means the healing of your body. It means the prosperity of your finances. It means deliverance from attack and preservation and protection and soundness. It actually means peace. Now, what in the world is peace? Peace is the word shalom. Well, what does shalom mean? It means completeness, wholeness, absolute victory, undisturbed composure, nothing missing, nothing broken. God's will for your life is no more curse. He wants you to walk in a covenant of peace. And you do have a covenant of peace. Now, we're going to talk about that a little bit in session after session until we are able to, to completely really get across to the heart and the mind of the people that they not only have a victory, but they can take that high victory ground and hold it and live in victory all of their lives. Glory be to God. Now here in Ephesians chapter 4, there's a powerful verse, and here's what it says. It says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Let's read that one more time. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now what he's saying here by the Scripture is this, that peace is not something that you're going to get. It's something you already have. Glory be to God. So you're, if you're endeavoring to keep it, then we're talking about peace and the force of it being associated with the flow of the Spirit, with unity, which means no division in your life, no strife, no distraction, no, no breaking up of your life. That means nothing missing, nothing broken. You know, the term integrity has a connotation of wholeness. If you take a pie and it comes out of the oven and it's complete, it's whole. It has, the pie has integrity. <laughs> But the moment you cut a piece out of that pie, the pie loses its integrity. One of the reasons that God wants you to know that there's the integrity of his word is he wants you to understand that there's not one part of it Jesus didn't die and pay for and want you to have. You need to realize that we need to believe God to receive everything Jesus died to provide. It is the will of God. God crushed him so you don't have to be crushed. He was bruised for our iniquity, so you don't have to live a life of wounded, bruised ego or, 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 or damaged emotions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. What I'm teaching you today will not only heal your body because it has that effect. Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood, daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Be whole of thy plague. So we see clearly that the cleanness of what was happening in her body the blood flow stopped that made her unclean. So now peace absolutely totally restored what she had been 12 years in physical help trying to get. But not only that, it established her socially to where now she can be a functional part of society. Go in peace. Go in peace. Go in peace. Be healed of thy plague. Peace evidently is the keeping power that's going to take the healing she received and cause her to keep it. See, the Bible says in Isaiah 26, 3, he says that if we stay our mind on him, he will keep us, keep us in perfect peace. That's the word that's doubled in the Hebrew. Actually, some translations read it this way, peace, peace, double peace, supernatural peace. Not peace like any human effort could give you. Not peace like the world gives, as Jesus said. I don't give you peace like the world gives. My peace I give to you. So if you can keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in double peace, mature peace, perfect peace, supernatural peace. What I'm trying to get across to you 
is peace is not passive. It is aggressive. What, what I want you to begin to crucify in your thinking is that peace is like what the old Eagles rock band used to say. I've got a peaceful, easy feeling. Listen, this peace we're talking about is not an easy feeling. See, you can have peace right in the middle of the storm. You can feel uneasy about what Satan's throwing at you in your mind. You can have faith in your heart and doubt in your mind, and the peace of God will keep you when the storm's trying to blow you off course. We're talking about something from heaven that is a spiritual force that's far beyond anything you and I could work up in our emotions or, or, or those kind of things. It's a fruit of the recreated human spirit, and it comes from heaven, and it's actually a covenant. Now, here's the thing about peace. Peace in the Bible is not given, it's made. You need to settle right now that peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is the result of an enemy absolutely conquered. When the enemy is unquestionably, completely, and absolutely subdued, bound, and put down, you have no more fear. You see, when war is over and the enemy is defeated, let, let me explain something to you. In World War II, after that whole regime, that demonic regime that was killing millions of Jews, once, once the freedom allied troops took over the property and kicked the door down to the concentration camp, guess what happened? The Jews are no longer afraid to walk out in the street or have to wear a yellow star or be worried what their last name was and looking over their shoulder. Now, here's the problem. For them to get completely free, they had been trained to that bondage. They had been under oppression so long that I'm quite sure the very first time that they experienced it, they didn't realize it was still in them. My, uh, I had an, uh, an uncle that fought in the Battle of the Bulge. And uh, if you know anything about military history in World War II, that was one, and I hope this doesn't offend you, but one hellacious battle. God never intended men to experience those things and see those things. War only came, the law of strife became the law of life on the whole human race when Adam sinned. We, we're not supposed to be at war with the devil, and that's why he was put down. My understanding is uh, I wasn't there, but 50 years after the war, 50 years after the war, he was in the Smithsonian Institute, and they were in the Aviation Museum, and he turned around, and there was a full-size replica of a German Messerschmitt plane hanging in the ceiling and it was angled down as if it was strafing. And his, his uh, uh, grandson and others that were touring the facility with him saw him, and he was just going along and enjoying himself. He turned around, and when he saw that Messerschmitt hanging in the ceiling, angled down as if it was strafing, he started shaking like that, and he, and he ducked. Fifty years later, he still had the fear of that oppression. That is not God's plan for you. I want you to know he wants to deliver you far from even the thought of oppression. He wants to totally redeem you so much that it's like you're a new creature. Like what happened to you happened to somebody in a distant past. It's like a dream and there's no smell of smoke on your clothes and no hair singed in your body. He wants you to have peace. Glory to God. And peace being established is the enemy absolutely defeated far beneath your feet. You're not fighting with it. You're not struggling with it. You're not wrestling with it. You're not coping with it. You're not going to self-help programs. You have been helped. You have been delivered. And I'm right with God. And I have peace with God. And because I have peace with God, something's happening. There is a heavenly force around me keeping me, shielding me, guarding me. And this is what I'm really trying to get across to you. Peace isn't given. It's not an easy emotional feeling. It's a spiritual force that makes peace. When the enemy's against you, God is on your side and God is for you. And God is so much for you, the enemy gets put down and God makes peace. 
Did you know that if a man's ways please the Lord, according to Proverbs, even his enemies will be at peace with him? Well, I guess so. If you look what happened with Pharaoh and the favor that came on Israel, there was darkness in Egypt and there was light in Goshen. There were frogs in the pots of Egypt, but there were no frogs in the beds of the Israelites. I want you to know they came out and they came out whole with silver and gold and not one feeble person and they didn't leave a hoof behind. God's bringing you out. And you, oh, 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 I have it in my spirit. Glory to God. See, see, these sessions are live for a reason. We're not just systematically teaching. We're under the teaching of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I've got something to say to you right now. Look at this verse. We'll come back to Ephesians, but look at Psalm 66. Woo! I'll tell you what, you're just going to have to put on your seatbelt to stay in the chair right now. My God, my God, my God. I want you to look at what it says in Psalm 66. This is what's happening to you right now while you're listening to this. What the anointing in this auditorium is ripping through here like a mighty river. And it's moving you from defeat into victory. It's absolutely destroying the division and the dysfunction in your life and putting you into completeness and wholeness with a sound mind and a healthy body and a prosperous bank account and a strong flesh and a, a spirit that believes it can accomplish. That's what peace did. He made peace. He created one new man. He put you on top and your enemies far beneath your feet. Look at what it says in Psalm 66. It says right here, he said uh, in verse 12, you've caused men to ride over our heads and we went through the fire and we went through the water, but you brought us out into a wealthy place. I'm telling you, I have it in my spirit right now. That's what's happening. That you're beginning to see that no matter what you've been through, the peace of God will restore you to a place to where it's recreation of original intent. It's like you never did that thing. It's like you never committed that sin. It's like you never made that bad decision. It's like you didn't lose that money in that investment because God is a God of breakthrough and God is a God of more than enough. And I want you to understand if your mind is stayed on him, he will keep you in peace, peace. He will keep you in perfect peace, double peace. He'll restore double for your shame. He'll recreate anything that you've done to yourself. He'll deliver you from what you brought on your own self. You need to know that God is merciful and he keeps covenant with mercy and he's going to move your mountain and your mountain's not going to move you. Glory to God. He is putting you in a place of peace, 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 peace. So no matter what's gone over your head, no matter what's come at your life, He's bringing you out right now to your wealthy place. And what I want you to get down deep in your heart, viewer, is I want you to understand he will keep you in peace, peace. Peace is the governmental angel army powering force that garrisons around you to keep in your life what Jesus' blood has bought. And if you'll stay in peace, you'll stay in victory. Glory to God. I tell you, we're going to have to revisit this again several times over. You are not going to want to miss our further broadcast as we come to you and talk to you about how to find and bind the strong man, take our ground, and walk in victory. But right now, in the name of Jesus, peace be unto you in Jesus' name. Uh, I'm a former banker, which means I was a professional of how to get in debt and help other people do that. And so uh, we went ahead and partook of our own advice, and I acquired so much debt I even impressed myself. And I was standing in my living room at home right by my kitchen, and the Spirit of God spoke to me and told me, He said, I'm going to take you into the fullness of what it means to be a covenant man. And praise God. We just, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to fast forward, there's a lot, but uh, I did get the letter. Uh, from one of the lenders that we are working with that uh, I'm not sure what happened here uh, Other than God did this Dear Brian K. Gray, that's me. We are pleased to inform you Now this is after 23 months of them holding on some paperwork to try to work some things out and the Lord put a cloud between us and them for 23 months We just got this letter last week we are pleased to inform you that we have approved your above reference account for participation in a principal forgiveness program. You will receive, now listen, now listen, I want you to listen at this. 
you will receive a full forgiveness. Now, 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 listen, listen now, now listen. I said full forgiveness. You will receive a full forgiveness of the remaining principal balance of $188,790.83 on your account. This principal forgiveness means that you, you no longer owe this amount. <laughs> You, I mean, do you understand that? You've forgiven. Uh, you you completely forgiven, and you don't owe it anymore. Uh, and it says uh, the amount secured by the property will be forgiven. Uh, but it gets better. And we will also waive any outstanding fees and accrued interest. We will also release the lien associated with this account. So <laughs> we're completely forgiven. Total release. Isaiah 43. <laughs> we'll just start in one. We're not going to go very far. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Now listen to verse 3. This is a big deal. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and she before thee. I didn't get I didn't get my daughter to send me the second page of the letter. That was the opt-out letter instead of in case I didn't want to participate in this forgiveness. <laughs> with, with listen, with the return envelope in it. I believe I'll participate. Just sign the waiver and mail it back. I'm not mailing it back. <laughs> Amen. Amen! Amen! Glory to God! We're free! Thank you for watching Experience Him. If this message has ministered to you and you would like more information or to contact Harvest International Ministries, write to us at the address on the screen or please visit us online at tracyharris.tv. Join us as we go from vision to victory by helping this generation reach its destiny through teaching, preaching, and healing the nations.